Everybody just minds the Lord, do what you right. what yeah. you're supposed to do. That's right. Uh, it, uh, if you if you sit down on the Lord, then uh, it, it, it narrows my options. I guess I'm not saying, uh, yeah. or whoever the preacher might be. Um, <coughs> but we want to do that that God would have us to do, whatever that is, whoever that is. Um, At any time that that is. I, I was uh, I was trying to prepare and I knew today was going to be busy. So I tried to study early. And I don't study in the afternoon well anyway. And certainly not at night after we get in. And I know everybody's tired. I know you are. I'm tired. Uh, singers that normally sing out, your voices are strained. And I, I know that. Um, and and I thought about the last few services and how, uh, and I'm talking about me, how I was somewhat disappointed. Uh, and then, uh, and I had scripture that the Lord had laid on me for the last two and a half days, I guess, and probably the last 15 minutes that I had to study this afternoon before I had to go get ready. He gave me a completely different scripture. Not, not necessarily a totally different thought, and I know many of you don't understand this, but when you try to study, we don't get to pick. And uh, and and when you go through the Bible and you start looking for something to, you know, you pray. And I'm, I don't pray as good as some. I'm sure some can just get down and stay down on their knees and pray until God says, okay, this is what I want you to preach. And, and I've got it that way. But a lot of times I sit down and I try to get away from everything and everybody. And I try to just open the Bible. And I start meditating on God's Word and asking Him, Lord, what would you have me to bring? And you can just flip, flip through the pages. It just will be a, a, an encyclopedia. You kids don't even know what an encyclopedia is, don't guess. But you can just flip through there. I mean, and it's nothing. I mean, it's it, they're just words on pages until God says, this is what I want you to use. That's right. And then it starts to grow. and uh, Or you at least pray that it does. And... Uh, but I had, I had, uh, hadn't got anywhere, and uh, I, I had thought about a little bit disappointed, um, not, not with the whole thing. Just I guess my expectations were so high, and uh, the last two or three services, I, I was a little disappointed. And uh, I've got a bunch of Bibles, uh, all of them King James Bibles. I don't use different things, but uh, when I got saved, I had a. <coughs> And I don't know what this is going to be. <laughs> so y'all just hang on. I don't know what this is going to be. Uh, you talking about scary. Uh, I'll tell you what comes to mind. You've heard of them like a shotgun blast. This is a crop duster right here. I don't know what we're going to get, but y'all just hang on. Um, but I was trying to go through, and I've got uh, Bibles that as my, my eyes got worse. I didn't used to have to use these. <laughs> Never used them in my life until a few years ago. And uh, so I, I had a Bible when I first got saved. It was a study Bible my mother gave to me. Small print and uh, nothing wrong with it, but I didn't like it. It was too busy for me. Um, for whatever reason, and I have a good inclination, it was the Lord and this church. But when I first got saved and I began to study, I didn't want all that. I wanted the Word and I wanted the Lord to show me what it meant. Yeah. I didn't want nothing else. Yeah. Now, I don't know why I was that way. That was just the Lord because I didn't know nothing. I didn't know what I was studying. You would have thought I would have wanted everything I could have got, but I didn't want that in the Bible. I wanted the Scripture. I don't know what put that in me, but it did. Yeah. But anyway, I went back to... Uh, I still got the Bible. We joined here. I say, well, you, Brother Marcus, myself, and to Tracy Cook in September of 2001. I believe that's right, if I ain't mistaken. And I just happened to be flipping through it today, and I bought this Bible in October of 2001. And uh, when I went through there, and it was the one that I used when I first started coming to church, I started trying to, because I didn't know nothing. And I don't know much now, but I didn't know nothing. And uh, I started trying to study, and I found scripture that 
through the grace of God. And y'all you know, know I ain't going to brag on nobody, and certainly not myself. And if you don't know that, ask whoever's sitting beside them. If they've ever been around me long, you ain't gonna, I ain't going to brag on you, and I ain't going to brag on me. I brag on the Lord, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, and I don't mean that to be harsh, but it comes across that way sometimes. But that's just how it is. But I, I, I found... I had scripture, and back then I started trying to highlight them. And I used a, a a yellow highlighter, and I wouldn't just put a mark or try to. I mean, I, I just cover every word on the scripture that I wanted to see. And when you open it up, it looks like a a clown's had a hold of it. It's just I started using a different color because that one would fade, and then I got it just colored all in. And a lot of the scriptures is thank the Lord for this, thank the Lord. But it's scripture that I don't have to have marked. Uh, in, in this Bible or, or another Bible. And I'll tell you about the Bible. I, I, I wasn't going to get into all this, but like I say, this is going to be a, it's going to be a mess. Y'all going to suffer through it. But uh, You talk about having to do things you're uncomfortable doing and make excuses for the Lord. This, I, I'll, tell, I'll tell this, so maybe it'll help somebody. I don't know who it might be. It don't necessarily have to be about preaching and it don't have to be about the Bible. We come into conference one night after that the Lord had called me to preach. And I still had that Bible. And I don't use it today because it came apart. I had a cheap, I didn't know nothing about Bibles. I, bought, I just bought a Bible. Well, it wasn't a good one. It just started coming apart after a few years. And I didn't want to get rid of it. I said it all had a cover put on it where it would stay together. But when they did that, it was in such bad shape when you open it up, it's hard to see the, the center of it. And the words were a little smaller. And I was getting a little older. And I could see this was probably going to be a good time to to move into something else. So that being said, that's why it's not here. But I still use it. I still have it at home. And I don't ever get rid of it. But uh, but I used to use that one Bible and that was it. I didn't use another. And y'all heard Brother Kevin joke about uh, he was trying to move into one with a little bigger print. It ain't easy to do when you get used to one. And I've heard, I know Brother Jerry and others that talked about it. I guess some of them still got the same one they started with. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't, and I don't, that's what I'm trying to get to. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But uh, had I known I was going to start wearing glasses, I wouldn't have changed. But I was trying to get out of that. And I kept going bigger and bigger trying to get away from having to wear them glasses. But what I'm getting to is we came into conference one night. And I didn't bring my Bible. And, uh, and I know some people bring them all the time. Some people don't. Uh, there was probably 50 Bibles in this room. But I used the excuse, our pastor wasn't able to get here. It wasn't Brother Kevin. It was years ago. Our pastor had an accident or something happened and he wasn't able to get here. So they started asking the preachers that had shown up to conference, you got anything on your heart? You know, uh, I think it might have been Brother Eddie because I think he was here when I got called to preach. But whatever the case, you know, well, I didn't have anything more or less on my heart than anybody else did. None of us was expecting that. But I used the excuse. I don't know why I'm going down this road. But I used the excuse, well, I ain't got my Bible with me. And you're talking about taking a beat. I took a beat. And I'm not down in nobody that's got their own Bible. I mean, the original one that they started with, and you don't want to change. And I ain't down in nobody for that. I'm telling you what happened to me. And I took such a beating over that that I almost made myself change a time or two since then to make myself use another one. And I told the Lord, I said, I'll never do that again if I have to use one of them little pocket sized Bible that somebody's got back there if I can see it. I'll never, ever, ever sit out on you for that, that reason again. I sat out on it. But uh, I took a beating on that. Uh, anyway, had that Bible was going through it, all that stuff marked in it. Found some scripture and then went into my other Bible and started trying to study. And I just couldn't put it together. And then uh, couldn't sleep good last night and the Lord woke me up with a, with a couple of verses and I I read that and what, what I'd been reading and it still didn't work. And then uh, today, a few minutes before I left, so this has already been a mess and it's going to get worse, but just, just bear with me. Uh, but before I left, the Lord laid some scripture on me and uh, I got to thinking, and, and, and this is going back to what I was saying about Brad. Uh, if you're here in visiting, I don't want you to think that I'm up here bragging about anything that Friendship Church has done. Because we've done nothing. That's right. Uh, every bit yeah, yeah. that's been done, if anything has been done here, it's all to the Lord's honor and glory. It's He, he that gives the increase, and He's the one that's blessed us and met with us. 
It's not anything to do with us. Amen. It's everything to do with Him. And I will brag on Him. I will brag on Him. He's the one that's worthy Amen. of being bragged on. Uh, and I'll just shell the corn down. I'm not worthy, and you ain't either, of being bragged on. You give us enough room, we'll make a mistake somewhere. But I'm bragging on the one that's perfect. And the one that set this place in motion, that set this place right here in the middle of Frog Pond, Tennessee, that we could come in and worship. But uh, I began to, and the talks that's been made goes along with my thought to me, may not for you by the time I get there, but it does to me. But uh, I began to think about how that I was dis disappointed. But yet, Look at what all took place. The days that I was disappointed in, they was testifying, singing, uh, in some cases shouting, in some cases people uniting with the church, lost people on the altar. Yeah, I want to see them saved, but we can't save them. But that's what they need to be doing. If they're lost, they need to be seeking the Lord. Uh, I, I, I was really surprised today that, that there was still room inside the building. I, I really was, I, and I and I think it was because a lot of people expected it to be so much, uh, so many more people here than has been through the week that a lot of them thought, well, you know, I just it, it's just going to be so crowded. I just don't think I'm going to go. I, th I honestly think that might have been what it was. I don't know that, but can you imagine being disappointed with that kind of problem? Yeah. Uh, and you see what I'm saying? I've been disappointed for uh, to a couple of three services. And it hadn't been too many years ago right here. We would have been doing backflips in here for what we are disappointed in now. That's how the Lord has blessed us here. Yeah. And what's been said about coming to get uh, up here in this altar and all that. Uh, Y'all just bear with us and see if we can't tie this together. And I, I'd like to say this won't be lengthy, but I don't know what it's going to be. Uh, I, I, I really don't. Uh, I, I don't know where to start. And I don't know, the Lord's going to have to tie it together yes. if it goes together. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn over here in Proverbs and, and start. And then we'll go from there. And I just pray the Lord will, will help and lead and guide. Uh, now I want you to listen. Uh, I want you to listen to uh, to a few verses here. I thought about the scripture where it talks about those landmarks, and most of the time that's referred to as the old uh, church and the things that's gone before, and, and I agree with that. But let me read this first, and we'll see how the Lord wants this to go. And y'all pray for us. The third chapter of the book of Proverbs, and I'll just start in the first verse. And I, and, and I don't know how this should go or who it might be directed to, so I just urge you, if you can, to pay attention. I've learned this week I don't know nothing. Uh, we were talking about the weather. I told Brother Jason I didn't think it was going to get no rain, but got two inches. I was sitting in here, uh, I said the other night, come out with something like I usually don't use the same verses. Uh, and what I meant by that was, if I do get the same verse or the same scripture, a lot of times my thought to me is hugely different. And then I was laying there, I guess I was in bed late that night, or I don't know if I got to bed yet. And I think I've preached on the 23rd Psalms three times. And I can't remember nothing now. The Lord brought this back to me. And every time, Brother Kevin was there. And it wasn't all here. It was different places over the years. And I bet he thought when I said that, well, uh, you know, I don't know what he's thinking about. Every time I go, he preaches the same thing. So, so I don't know nothing. I don't know who it's directed toward. I'm just trying to do that God had me to do. So y'all just bear with me. Um, but on the third chapter in the first verse in the book of Proverbs, it says, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart Keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Now hang on to that third verse. 
So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and marrow to their bones. Um, I want you to really, really pay attention as we turn to another place in the Scripture. These middle verses here that we read. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Now turn with us, and, and y'all pray for us. Amen. Turn with us to 2 Corinthians, and I believe the 6th chapter. And I want you to think about what's been said already about coming together. And, and I'm going to tell you, uh, just like what they said, and I do very, very little when it comes to moving off my seat to do anything. But the nights that we came in here and we weren't worried about where we were going to sit and that all of us gathered up here in the altar and we serve the Lord. And, and I, I mean, it was a, a day service or two, I think. That's where it started. When it was a day, day service, we all gathered in here. I wouldn't take nothing. The whole meeting was worth that service. The whole meeting was worth that service. And if you don't come to day services, I'm going to encourage you to try to work your schedule around if the Lord ever gives us an opportunity to have another meeting and we have day services that you make that effort. Yeah. Because it's a great blessing. Yeah. Not because of anything to do with friendship, but the Lord will meet with you if you'll put forth a little effort. Yeah. Uh, but listen to what it says here. And this is a scripture that comes after a lot of familiar scripture. You hear a lot in the, about in the, the scripture in the fifth chapter there in 2 Corinthians where it talks about that if you... Uh, well, I'll just read it. Therefore... If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Now, I know everybody here believes that. You believe that, that when the Lord saves you, old things are passed away and everything else is new. You're a new creature. You're a new creature in the Lord. Bought with a price. Bought with a price. Listen to what it says as we go down into the sixth chapter and the first verse. Now, he's writing this to the church at Corinth. Mm -hmm. Saved church members is who he's writing this to. Just the same as if he'd have wrote it to friendship 2,000 years ago. Now you listen to what it says. It says, We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in a day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. That's the cause. That's the cause of God. That's the church of the true and living God. That one branch of right here at Friendship that the Lord saw fit to let it go. Now let me read that again. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. So keep that in mind. We're going to try to tie this together if the Lord will help us. But it talks about here in the fourth. But in all things are proven ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in, wa in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by longsuffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned. And when you look that up, that's the kind of love that God has toward us. It's a pure love. It's an undisturbed love. It's the only kind of love you can have in your heart when God saves your soul. Listen now. It says, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, 
as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. O ye Corinthians, our mouth is open unto you, our heart is enlarged, ye are not straightened in us, but ye are straightened in your own bowels. Now for a recompense in the same, it says, I speak as unto the children, be ye also enlarged. Now, I want to stop there just for a minute. Now we're going to go on and finish this, and then we'll try to serve the Lord here. It says, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion has light with darkness? And what concord uh, has Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. It says, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And it says here in the 18th, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Now I want you to give me just a minute if the Lord will give me a little bit of leeway to try to expound upon this. I got to thinking about the church and the blessings that the Lord has poured out on it in this place, and how that we've come together, and how that people have talked about going out in the community, and other communities, and other churches, and they ask about the meeting, and they want to know more about it, and thank God, and listen, I'm not bragging on us at all. I'm not bragging on these at all. I'm not bragging on nothing, but God pouring down His blessing on this place. But listen, he has done it, done it again, as Brother Kevin said. He has poured it out again this time. Uh, listen, beyond measure, I don't know that I have ever been in a revival meeting anywhere at any time. I have felt the presence of the Lord as much as I have felt it in this meeting. Yeah. And I, I know when you start preaching like this, uh, people think, well, he thinks it over. I don't think nothing. Just listen to what we got. You know I ain't very smart. You ain't you will know that. But listen to what it says. It talks about and what we read. Let's go back over and see if we can grab a little of this. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. And it talks about be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And I know how that can be used in a lot of ways, but when it goes down through here and it talks about how that Christ has nothing to do with Belial and how that idols don't have anything to do with the Spirit, when you go to comparing those things, what that means to me, it goes right along with the Scripture that talks about to come out of that world, to be separate from the world. Yeah. Uh, that we're not supposed to go in the world and just mix and mingle and, and, and just go right together. It should be oil and water when we're in the world. Uh, we shouldn't mix and mingle with everything in the world. We ought to be different. Why should we be different? I want to go back to that, that third verse that we read over there where it says, Give it no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Uh, if you've been here you know the blessings. If you've been here, you've been saved. And you know the blessings that the Lord has rained down on this place that we get weekly. But most certainly when we gather in uh, here for this revival time and last year and the year before and the year before, the Lord has blessed our soul here. He has met with us in a great way and we have been able to reap the rewards, if nothing else, of feeling the presence of God many times when we have a meeting. But when you go out in the world and people are asking, they hear about this. You know, when a man gets called to preach, he immediately goes from being looked at right here to being looked at right here. Makes no difference who he is, and he's looked like that. He's looked at uh, like that from everyone, most especially the world. You go out in the world and you claim to be a Christian, they'll look at you like here. 
You claim to be an old time Baptist where they look at you a little closer because there's something to what you are. Uh, you claim to be on up here, you truly claim to be a saved old time Baptist. You come up here and hold any office in the church and then they're looking at you a little bit closer. They're putting you under the microscope. And when you called out to carry his word or ordained to the full work of the ministry, you're up here on the top. They're watching every move you make. That's just the way the world is. May not be right. You might say you wished it wasn't that way. I know it's that way. I've been on both sides of that. I know exactly how it is. I've been there and done things. And they'd say, well, I can't believe you've done that. You're a preacher. And there'd be ten of us doing it. Nobody would say nothing to the rest of them. It was a preacher they were looking at. And it's the same way if you're a church member. When the Lord blesses our soul here and we go out into the world and we start living like the world, the efforts uh, that we put forth and the blessings God has rained down on this place will have no effect on somebody if you live like the world when this meeting breaks. No. I don't mean we will have a little bit. You go back out into the world and you live ungodly. You live like the world does. You come to church whenever it's convenient. You make no effort whatsoever uh, to live for God out in the world and remember the things He's done for us this week and blessed us for. Uh, you live like that and that person sees that. They know where you're a member. They know about, they hear somebody else say something about the meeting and they say, uh, boy, that meeting up our friendship was really good. And they'd say, well, how good could it be? So and so over there is a member there. I heard them say so. Look how they live. Look what they do. How good of a place could it be? They'll discount the Lord before we get an opportunity for it to reach out to them and get them here. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, <clears throat> Y'all pray for us. Yeah. We'll try not to worry your patience. But we want to get this. We want to be done with this. Uh, talks about here, after all that, about how we shouldn't be taken up with the things of the world and the ungodly things don't mix with the things of God. You come down, wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate. Saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Yep. You know, it don't say go out there and do good four out of the seven days. You know, it's easy to do good in here. We come in here on Sunday, everybody puts up their best guard. Uh, we guard our mouth the closest. We're watching what we say and do. We're watching everything when we're in the Lord's house, and you're in here with people who's doing the same thing. It's yeah. easy to be a good servant of the Lord on Sunday morning if you'll get up and come to the Lord's house. It's easy. As easy as it gets. I'll put it that way. I don't know that it ever gets easy. But it's as easy as it gets when we're in here like we are now. This is as good as it's going to get. But what about all the times we're not here? And outside of revival time, we're out of here more than we're here. And when you're out there, it says to come out from among them. Don't say come most of you out. It don't say 80% of you come out and 20% of you just do the best you can. It says come out and be separate. I don't think that means that I quit my job and I and we start a, a cult and we go out here and buy a farm and we never uh, go back to civilization as we know it. I don't think it means that at all. The gospel is supposed to be spread and it can't be spread by people that don't know the gospel. It's got to be people that know the Lord and tell somebody about the Lord. But listen, uh, I think what this means by the Scripture and lining other Scriptures up is that when we go into the world, there's a difference. We're separated from them. Yeah. They may do something that everybody does, but if you wouldn't do it in front of the Lord and that's what you're doing, then maybe you ought to consider you don't need to do it no matter how many people's doing it. <coughs> maybe you need to consider that I would rather the Lord be pleased with me and bless us when we gather in close together uh, from week to week or year to year in revival or whatever the case is, that whenever we gather in here, I want to feel the Lord's presence. I love it when we come in here and we feel the Lord. I love that. I don't have to jump. I don't have to shout. 
I don't have to run around. I love it when I come in here and I can feel the Lord amongst us. Amen. And I love it when you do too. Yeah. I can rejoice when you feel the Lord amongst us. And you got to be saved to do that. And I'll just shell the corn down. He's not going to come in amongst the church that don't want him there. Right. And you may say, well, when you come in on Sunday, you may say, well, I want him there. Well, sure. Yeah, we all want the paycheck. How, how, let me ask you this. We all want the paycheck. I just thought about that. Uh, you go to work. I'd say that most of us in here, there's a working age, most of us still. If you go to work, you work all week, you expect a check. Well, if I don't go back to work when this meeting breaks, if I just stay home and I call down there on Friday, I said, hey, if you don't mind, just mail me my check. They probably will mail me one. It'll be my last one. If you ain't going to come into work, we don't need you. Uh, you, just, you just keep your seat there at your house. You're fine. We'll, we're fine. And then the checks will stop. There wouldn't be no payment. Now, that don't mean you work your way up to being saved. It don't mean that. But certainly with the Scripture, you can't take the Scripture and find anything other than once that God saved your soul, He instructs you to unite with the Lord's church. Right. And then, He instructs you to work for Him and live for Him and be an example. What does the Scripture say right here? Uh, right before we get back to this. Um, in the 5th, right down there about the 20th verse. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. What is, an ambassador is a representative. Somebody that goes out from some foreign place to an, or, or from the country to a foreign place and expounds upon them and, and is a representative of where they come from. Right, yeah. Now that's what we're to be when we go out in the world. An ambassador for Christ. We're going to go out in the world and there's a, a world full. A world full. You heard what Sister Tracy said right here in this county. That, that broke my heart. I can't believe you know what? I, I didn't grow up this way. But I grew up hearing about Jesus. Never can I remember a recollection in my life when I was of understanding that I hadn't been told about Jesus. And that I hadn't been instructed to seek the Lord for salvation. Never can I remember that recollection. I don't even I can't even comprehend a child growing up in this county to any age and never hearing about Jesus Christ. And certainly when they get up of age, not knowing what to do. In order to be saved, we are ambassadors for the Lord. That's right. Ambassadors for Christ. You know what? I think if the United or the uh, United States had a uh, ambassadors that done what I've done, sometimes he probably wouldn't get to keep his job very long. <coughs> Old Uncle Joe would probably find somebody else. <coughs> Let's do that. Listen to what it says. Going back over in the Proverbs. Y'all pray for me. I got to thinking about all that the Lord had done. Not just here. I got to thinking about as I was trying to study. I got to think about these sisters that told about that journey. Well, we ain't got enough time. Y'all ain't going to worry about that one. There ain't enough time for me to tell you about the, everything took place to get me here. But I thank God for it. But going back over there to where we started. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. This is the third chapter of Proverbs again. And the third verse. <clears throat> Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Mercy and truth. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Ambassadors for Christ. It's good to have a pure heart. It's good to love the Lord. And it's good to know the Lord loves you. But the Scripture here says we're supposed to find ourselves in a condition for God and man. Now we're taught all through the Bible you're not supposed to please man. So to line this up with the Scripture, we're pleasing God because God said to him. We're supposed to be found in that condition before man so man can't find anything to discount God's cause. He can't blaspheme the Lord. Right. What was it they told? Uh, and I'll probably get this wrong. I believe it was Daniel. He was over there and they were wanting to get him and they couldn't. They couldn't find no fault in him. 
He lived uh, before the Lord and before those around him in a manner, in a godly manner, and they couldn't find fault in him. That means he didn't try to uh, do anything wrong at work. He done an honest day's work, an honest day's pay. He was good to those people around him, loved our neighbor as ourselves. Uh, you can find a lot of these over in about the 20th chapter of Exodus if you want to get a list of what we need to be doing. Uh, but he, he was like that. And they said, if we're going to give him, we're going to have to find fault between him and his God. That's what they done. They raised that statue up and said, when the horn blows, you got to worship him. And they wouldn't do it. That's what it might have been uh, Meshach. Uh, I can't never remember them. Brother Kevin, I used to, and he got me confused on their name now. I don't even know what to call them. But y'all know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> but listen to what it says here. It says here, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. How many times this week, just this week, have we heard somebody say, I don't know why, the Lord wants me to do this. I don't know why He would have me to do this. I don't know why. Well, let me tell you something. I've asked the Lord that a bunch. A bunch. Uh, somebody today, I think it was today, might have been yesterday, they said they made the comment that they would never be a member, or somebody did, that they'd never be a member of the Lord of, of the church. Never join the church is what somebody said somebody had told them. I don't remember where that was at. But I can tell you one that said that. You're looking at it. I, I, and I said it. I said it a lot like, and the reason it don't tear me up today. I said it, and I remember the Lord's church. Thank God. Thank God He let me uh, eat a little crow, and He let me join the Lord's church. But just like Paul said over there in uh, 1 Timothy, he said, I did it ignorantly and unbelief. And when I made that statement, I was lost in my soul. And I made the statement I'd never be a member of any church. I mean, I lumped them all together. Never. He changed that one day. It says right here, lean not to that own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him. And He not me, not you, not the government, not the employer where we work, not our husbands, not our wives, not grandmamas, not granddaddies, but the Lord. He will direct our paths. Now, you know, that's easy to say. You come here on Sunday morning, stand up and say that, you'll get amen to all around the house. You go out in the world and you let something turn left on you you wasn't expecting. And you have to either say, I'm going God's way or I'm going to go this way. It ain't so easy then. But if we can do what, we're, what the Scripture says do, if we can just do that. It says here, <clears throat> Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, and depart from evil. Now that's plain, plain Scripture. As bad as I am at delivering this, that's his, the Scripture. God's Word is as plain as it can be. There's no way you can mess that up. There's no way. You don't have to follow it. You don't have to do it. But you can't say that it don't say what it says. I can't make you do anything. And God won't make you do anything. It's your choice to serve the Lord or not serve the Lord. It's your choice. Now, He'll whip you for not serving. But I've seen people, I believe they've made a cow hide. Uh, they took whippings after whippings, and they just don't seem like they do right. And a whole lot of times, I think I got a lot of that in my in my backside too, because I won't do right sometimes, knowing what's right. But if we'll do what God wants us to do, what did it say? Going back over here, and I'll finish this out, and we'll close. Back over in Second Corinthians, it says, "Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you." And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. You know what? Uh, that's where I want to be. I want the Lord to look down and be pleased with what I do individually, 
And I want him to look down and be pleased to what we do collectively as Friendship Church. And I want him to look down and be pleased collectively with what all old time Baptists are doing in this world. Now, easy? Certainly not. But I want him to be. And I can't control all the old time Baptists. And I can't control Friendship Church. When you get right down to it, it's who, the, who I look at in the mirror that I've got to deal with. And you know what though? If we'll all look in that mirror and we'll put forth that effort to serve the Lord, to be separate from the world, and to live godly, there's great... I, I honestly think, and y'all ain't going to believe it, not believe it. I mean, I don't... You do whatever you want to. I ain't the, I've told you I ain't the boss of nobody. I am blessed beyond measure for what I've been able to witness here since 2001. Beyond measure. And every revival hadn't been like this revival. And every revival hadn't been like last revival. And we hadn't had day services ever since 2001. But I have been blessed beyond measure since 2001. It seems like the Lord has always got something more in store whenever we can finally get ourselves in a shape that He'll come in and meet with us. There's just blessings after blessings after blessings. And it ain't just here. There's other places too. This is my home. This is my home church. This is where I attend the majority of the time. And it's been a great blessing. But I never thought we would see nothing like last year. And I never thought we would see nothing like this year. I didn't. This has been a great blessing. I'm not discounting anything. I don't even have the words for it. I don't know how to even put it and describe it other than thank God for what He's done. But I know I can do better. And I'm pretty sure you can do better. What would happen if we all done better and you, the Lord is sitting there waiting on an obedient people that He can rain down blessings on? He's sitting there. He give us the Word. He give us the Scripture to go by. He sent men of God our way to tell us the error of our ways and how we need to do and behave and conduct ourselves just like He told Timothy there so he know how to behave himself in the house of God, which is a true and living God. Now listen, His house, they told us that. Uh, he has rained down that blessings to us when we just do a little better. How, how, what can we see? What could God show us if we would let Him? Yeah. I guess that's where I'm at. Thank God. Thank God for what we have and what He has given us. But... Two things. We need to live what we have claimed to be this week. <clears throat> and if we get closer to the Lord and we live like that and we put the Lord first, I, I, I don't even... I mean, what would be next? Could you even dream up what would be next? I have no idea. I have no idea. But I've got a, a, a deep sense when you read the Scripture... And you look around, and I'm critical. I'm critical of everybody. I'm not just critical of me. I'm critical of you too. Uh, if I see you do something wrong, if I'm driving down the road, and you turn it in the wrong place, or going somewhere I don't think you ought to go, I may not ever say a word. Boy, it just goes running all over me. Uh, and it ain't just you. Uh, it's preachers. It's anybody. I'm hard on preachers. You don't think you think I'm hard on somebody. You let me see a preacher do something wrong. I can't hardly stand it. I can't hardly stand it. Because let me tell you something. You've heard this said. I could doubt my salvation just as easy as I could doubt when the Lord called me to preach. There, there is no, there is no doubt about that. I didn't want it to be that, but that's what it was. And just like Brother Todd said, I told my wife I went and told her first because I knew I could put the word "think" in there. I think I've been called. Well, she didn't say anything. She just we talked about it a little bit. She didn't uh, push me one way or the other. But I knew "think" wouldn't work here. And I knew think ain't what it was. And while we're getting on this, I'll just finish this out. Y'all sit through this, you can go a little longer. I used to sit back here about where Brother Ronnie's at. And, and that, was a, that was a spot that I liked sitting. That's where I wanted to be. Uh, and I don't remember if I'd moved up to the second one, but right in that area right there, I was content as I could be. Content as I could be sitting there. From now on to the Lord come back, I would have sat right there if He'd left me alone. And He called me to preach. And like I say, I told my wife that I thought he had called me. Uh, well, I knew that wasn't right. I knew he had called me. And I went on. I didn't run no great long time like some people do. And I'm not 
saying nothing for or against that, but uh, I, I, I know, I know the Lord called me, but I had to believe that the Lord had called me. I had to trust in what He had done for me. I had to trust and have faith that He had directed that path to me. Because I could think of a thousand reasons why He didn't need to call me. I didn't know nothing. Uh, to pick somebody that grew up this way, that's been brought up, uh, like they talked about earlier in the week, rocked in the Baptist cradle. Uh, pick them. Lord, I'm, I, I, I've got a, a dull voice. Why would anybody want to listen to me? I'm not a good speaker. I, don't, I come up with a ton of stuff. It was a ton of stuff. I can't do this. Like everybody said, I guess, I can't do this. But I couldn't sit down on what the Lord had done for me. He kept bringing back to me, just in that short time, all that He had done for me. And I'll tell you this, I don't know whether this is for anybody or not, but I, I reached up the first Sunday to stand up and tell that. I reached up and got a hold of the pew in front of me to stand up, and as soon as I touched that pew, I went cold as ice. And I thought, what now? I thought I'd been called. I don't know about this. Well, quick as I turned loose and sat back, that pounding was there to tell him, you know, tell it, tell it. Well, I thought, I, I don't know about this. I ain't never, every other time I'd ever stood up when that pounding was there and I reached and got a hold of that and stood up, it was just like Brother, uh, Brother said the other night, who was thinking about uh, shoulders. Brother Shoulders said it just, uh, T just tingle all over. That's the way it was. I I remember I stopped my brother Audi up there at the parts house. I'd go by there on Monday or Tuesday and I'd say, what did I say? Did I say anything wrong? Did I make a fool of myself? I didn't know what was I mean I just it was just it was just that much of a power on me. But I tried to stand up until I was called. He knew because of that thing. And he knew because of what I faced. I had to believe in what he had done for me. Well, I waited a week, boy wore me out. Every day, knowing I should have told it, knowing I should have told it, knowing I'd been called, knowing I'd been called, and, and it just wore me out. And, and like everybody does, Lord, if you let me get back in there, I'll tell you. And I got back in here the next week, sitting in the same spot, same seat, everything the same. Got an opportunity, knocking on my heart to stand up and tell that. And I reached up and got a hold of that bench and that same, just that old cold feeling. And I never slowed down. I pulled on that bench started up and I thought I was going to bust. It filled me up from head to toe. But he made me trust in him. He didn't knock me off my seat. I didn't see the sign that we talked about the other day that we beat Brother Sean up so bad about. Uh, I didn't do all that. He made me trust in him. Listen, I know y'all want me to hush, but you think about this. And I'll hush, I promise. Y'all think about this. Think about this. A Lord that made everything that there is, that saw fit to put this place in this little community, and saw fit you were born here, or was able to get here, whether you was raised this way or raised some other way. That you heard the Gospel, that you sought the Lord, that you knew you needed to seek the Lord because the Lord was big enough to trouble your soul, let you know you were hell bound. Nobody had to tell me that. I had trouble and sorrow. Thank God I was in a place I was instructed in the right way, but I had trouble and sorrow in my soul. And nobody told me that was gone except the Lord. I was by myself when the Lord saved me, me and the Lord. Nobody else around, far as I know, nobody going up down the road. I was sitting in a truck at a stop sign alone in the truck. And the Lord saved my soul. And listen, undisputable. Undisputable. I know the lost people think, what am I looking for? I promise you, you'll know when you find it. Yeah, uh, it's undisputable what happened. The Lord saved my soul. Then called me to, to preach. Undisputable. I don't. I didn't like it. And I, I thought, boy, there's a lot better choices. But I'll tell you what I've come to understand. I thought about this. I almost said it when we started. Uh, and, and I don't mean this. And, and, and I know everybody thinks I run myself down. But it, it's, if you knew me, you'd understand why. Uh, it's, it's, it's got merit. <laughs> uh, but listen, uh, if this was a preaching contest, I would lose. Uh, I would lose. I ain't got a chance. But God knew what He was doing. Amen. And I don't know why. And I, I quit even wondering why. This is God's will. And I can either do it or I can sit down on it. That was my choice. And it's a preacher sat down on it. Brother Todd had a cop come in here that started this meeting and told us all, said, you know what, I've been called to preach and y'all asked me to come. I, I, I'm busy this week. Y'all just, I'm going to take a week out. Y'all just go ahead. We'd have talked about him like a dog. We would have run him down. He'd have been the sorriest one uh, that they'd ever been. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But what did we do? 
<coughs> Lord, lay something on us. What do we do? Well, we don't. We don't think near. We, we got reason. I got reason to that. I got this going on, that going on. We're without excuse. The one that saved our soul. The same one called me to preach. He, he's the same one that called Ben to preach. And he's the same one that told Ben to sing that song. Which is the same one that told Sister Kayla where she's at to sing that song. And half a dozen others. I ain't never seen nothing like it. I ain't never seen nothing like it. Uh, and you know what happened? We would have not got to rejoice in any of that. Yes, no. If they would have just said, Lord, I ain't going to do it. Yeah. And you know what? There's probably plenty of that went on. And he still blessed our soul like he did. Yeah. I, I don't even have words. What if we get in a condition where we live like we have this week every day? I don't mean having churches every day. But if we live to, for the Lord every day. Right. And we separate ourselves every day. And we serve Him and we're that ambassador for the Lord that we should be every day. You're going to make mistakes. Everybody's going to make mistakes. But just think about if the church as a whole put forth that kind of effort. What kind of blessings would God bless us with and show us? But the main thing, if you don't take nothing else away from this, just remember, if we go out into the world, thank God for what He has done. But if we live like the devil after this meeting breaks, and we go back out of the world just like nothing ever happened, then we're going to be bringing reproach on the church. And we're going to be hindering all the blessings that God has rained down on us. And listen, if we do that, what makes us think that God's going to keep pouring this out? I mean, why would He? Would you? Would you? If I treated you the way a lot of us treat the Lord, would you want to give me anything? I, I don't think so. I'm thankful that He's as merciful as He is. And I believe our Scripture said that over in Proverbs. Find that mercy and truth about her neck and write it on the tablets of her heart. Listen, we need to pay attention to the Scripture. We need to be mindful of the Lord and His leadership and God. We need to be grateful. We need to be thankful. We need to be prayerful. And, and we need to give praise, honor, and glory. All praise, honor, and glory to the Lord. Amen. We've done nothing. The Lord has done it all. And I thank the Lord for it. The Lord forever been. I thank, thank you for your patience. And I know that was... Hey, that would be something in there for somebody because it was all over the place. Uh, but listen, y'all just uh, pray, pray for the church here. And, and if your members here, uh, you know I love you. I, I love you and I love these two brothers here and I don't know what the Lord would have us to do. But I'm done. Y'all get you a song, whatever you feel like needs to be done and just, just circle them. Yeah. <clears throat>